In this video, I'm going to show you how to do a fake prism effect right inside of Adobe After Effects. So let's get into it. So once you're inside of Adobe After Effects and you've got some footage on your composition, as you can see, I've got a few seconds of me tracking back and focusing on the London skyline. So in order to do this effect, we first just want to make a duplicate of this layer. So we'll select this layer, we'll go Command C and Command V. If you're on Windows, that is Control C and Control V. And then on this second layer here, we're just going to zoom out a little bit. So zoom out to around there. Then we're going to go up to this top bar inside of Adobe After Effects and select the pen tool. Then we're just going to draw a mask around the middle of the frame. And as you can see, I'm just doing this slight slant here. Now I'm just going to move the position of this over to the left a touch and then I'm going to press T to load opacity and I'm going to pull the opacity down to around 40, 50% we'll go with. Then we'll go to the very beginning. We'll press M on the keyboard to load mask. We'll go into mask path and create a brand new keyframe on the mask path by selecting the time very stopwatch or the stopwatch icon. Then we'll go a few frames over to the right. So let's go to around 10 frames or so. And then we're just going to change the position of this mask. We'll move this mask just down off screen like so. So as you can see, we start with it up here and then it comes off. Of course, that is a bit too far. So we'll just increase the gap between those two keyframes. And that looks a lot nicer. Although the problem is with this effect, we can still see that harsh line created by the mask. You can see that just running across here. So in order to fix that, we're just going to go into the mask. So we'll select mask one go into mask feather and we'll increase the mask feather up to around 100% and that should get rid of that hard edge. If it's still a bit too hard though, then feel free to increase that all the way up to around two or 300 and that should get rid of that edge completely. There you go, that looks really cool. Of course, if this is still a little bit too fast for you, this transition off, then always just increase that gap again just to make that nice and slow. like so. Now we're going to press S on the keyboard to load scale on this top layer and we're just going to increase the scale just a little bit. So we'll increase that up to, in my example, it's 50 and that's because I'm shooting in 5k footage and editing in a 1080p composition. But if you've got 1080p footage and you've got a 1080p composition, then that will be 100 and you'll increase the scale of this top layer up to around 120 or 130. So as you can see, that is creating this nice effect on the left. Although the problem is at the moment, there's no levels and there's no blur. So we're going to go into effects and presets and we'll search for levels. Drop levels onto that top layer and then we'll go to input white and we'll increase the input white into a higher number. So let's go up to around 200% just to make that stand out a little bit. And that is starting to look really nice. Now we just need to go ahead and we need to add some blur onto this effect here. So we'll go into effects and presets, search for blur. And you can select any one of these blurs here, but I do like the look of the directional blur. So I'm going to drop the directional blur on top of this. I'm going to increase the blur length and I'm just going to change the direction to 90 degrees roughly. And when we play this back, that looks really nice. Of course, you can make this blur as long as you like. So if we increase this, that's really going to create this nice effect on the left. And then we've just got one more thing to finish off this effect, and that is to add an adjustment layer just to add a bit of brightness and a bit of blooming to this effect. So we're just going to zoom out a little bit. We'll go to layer, new, adjustment layer. Then we're going to search for levels again. But this time we're going to select levels, individual controls. We'll select that, drag that onto our adjustment layer. And now if we go into RGB, you can see we've got what we saw before. So you've got your input black, input white, gamma, output black and output white. We'll change the input white. We'll pull that up just a little bit, just a touch. And then we'll increase the gamma a touch as well, just so that we get those softer shadows. And then if you wanted to add a color hue into this, then you can just go into the blue, green or red effects and just increase the gamma on that effect as well. So as you can see, the effect is starting here and going off to the left. So we're going to do the same thing with the adjustment layer. We'll just zoom out, go up to the top bar, then we'll go to the ellipse tool. Then we'll just create an ellipse mask around the left side of the frame. We'll go into mask one, mask feather, and we'll increase the mask feather all the way up to around 500%. Then we'll create a brand new keyframe on mask path at the beginning. 
we'll scroll through to where this effect ends. So it was somewhere around here. And then we'll just move the mask path off screen to the left, like so. And when we play that back, you can see we've got this really nice effect starting to take place. Of course, if it's a little bit too bright for you, this color adjustment, you can always just pull the mask opacity down to get rid of that or just tone it down a little bit. Or of course, if the effect isn't quite as predominant as you wanted it to be, you can always just increase these levels even further. So we'll increase the gamma, increase the blue gamma, increase some input white. And that's going to create that really intense effect on the left there. But there you go, because we've got the duplicated footage, we've increased the scale, we've added some directional blur, we've got the feathering, we're getting this nice prism reflection type effect on our footage. And it's just a really nice stylistic technique to add to your videos if you want to create a dreamlike sequence or if you want to create something a little bit fantastical. Now, in my example, it's just starting on screen and transitioning out. Of course, in your example, you could start off screen, transition in and then transition back out again. Or you could just start off screen, transition in and cut to another video. It's completely up to you, but the technique is exactly the same. So there you go. That is how you create this prism like effect inside of Adobe After Effects. And it's all using very simple plugins. So of course you could take this technique, throw it into Premiere Pro, follow those same steps and you'll get a very similar effect inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. And you could also do this in other editors as well. But there you go. That is the effects now complete. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and hopefully I will see you on the next video. See you there.